welcome back. My name is Alejandra Landano and I am so excited you are here watching today's video. On this channel, I chat all about online teaching, teacherpreneur life, TPT, and more. If any of those topics interest you, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future videos and future content. Now, today's video is a little bit different than usual. I'm actually going to be sharing with you, as you probably saw in the title, a quick classroom tour. I'm going to show you kind of what my classroom and office space looks like, and I will try to link as many of the items I discussed in the comments down below. I am also trying to start organizing my Amazon storefront. So so lots of my stuff I use in my classroom are from Amazon, so I'll have those linked as well. Now, let's go ahead first and talk about my backdrop. So I've actually had the same backdrop for about two years. My backdrop though is very, very simple. I have a nice bulletin board paper behind me, and I love this bulletin board paper because it's not very papery. It's made to be used like multiple times, so the quality is very, very good. And I did find that on Amazon, and Amazon actually has a few different designs as well if you don't like the, the wood kind of style. Now behind me I also do have a whiteboard now I love this whiteboard for the size and the fact that it's magnetic so I don't use the whiteboard too often with my students I think I only have one or two ongoing classes that I actually write on the whiteboard most of the time I'm just hanging stuff up behind me so I love the whiteboard because it's magnetic I got that on Amazon too but I do know sometimes there's other stores that have them a little bit cheaper in person like during back to school sales but it is a very very good board now, as you can see behind me, I do have two other small decorations. One of them I got from an online teacher and another one I just got from a thrift store. Honestly, I am thinking about changing those out. I've just had them for so long. I think it'd be a quick change to just revamp my classroom, but I haven't found anything really cute yet. So if you have any ideas, definitely leave those in the comments. But my backdrop is pretty simple, very clean looking, and there's really no reason for me to be constantly changing it in my personal opinion. Next, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the furniture I have in my classroom. So this chair, it is not even a good chair. I don't know if I thrifted it or someone gave it to us, but I am soon going to invest in a new chair. It works for right now, but I definitely need a new chair. So if you have any recommendations for new work chairs that are really good, um, but not like too expensive, leave them in the comments down below as well. But I have a work chair, which I deal with. I also have a stand-up desk or an electronic desk, which is probably the best investment I have ever made for my classroom. It is seriously amazing. I got it white just because I wanted it to match my classroom and they have a few other colors on Amazon. But the best thing is all you have to do is plug it in and then you can move it up or move it down by literally the click of a button. And I use this so much. If I'm ever starting to lose kind of energy, I force myself to stand up and it is the best thing ever. Now, while we're talking about standing up while teaching, there's two things or one of two things I kind of recommend so your feet do not hurt if you want to stand up and teach. The first one is either a foam mat. So I used a foam mat from time to time. I used to use it a lot, but then I realized that slides actually work really well too. So I recommend having something on the floor just so your feet don't get exhausted. I'll either use a pair of slides or a mat and that just helps me so like my legs and my feet don't hurt as well as my back. So it's just really, really good support. Now, the last piece of big furniture is probably the cart behind me. And I'm going to actually go in pretty good detail in regards to that cart, because that's basically where I keep everything for my online classroom and my office. I really tried to designate everything in this little box area. Um, and it just helps me feel less cluttery. If you've seen other videos and I can probably put clips of what my classroom looked like before I kept a lot of like my classroom stuff and it was just everywhere versus now I have a little bit of a mess in this classroom, but my workspace is just so much cleaner and it's just it makes the biggest difference. So I'm gonna show you everything I have in that cart. That cart can be found on Amazon as well, but I am gonna tell you it's usually cheaper at Michael's. Um, you can find them at Michael's either in like rainbowy color, there is usually a clear color, and I think there's one other one. Oh, there's like a blue color. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about my cart. The first thing is you're gonna see are those beautiful labels, and I actually got that on TPT. So I just bought it, and then I was able to edit it. So I was able to edit them and then just print them out, cut them out, 
out and put them on. That was super easy and it made such the biggest difference for me to have labels for every single part of my cart. But let's go ahead and talk about what exactly is on this cart. So on the top, I usually have a bunch of random stuff as you can see. I have a few containers with different supplies. Like this one has my pens and I have more pens on my table. And then I have another container with markers, Expo markers, Sharpie markers, all of that fun stuff. But I just like to keep them nice and organized. I am thinking about for this one, maybe like painting it because it's just too wintry for me for all the like the whole year, but I mean, it's not the end of the world. I think I got this at Target when it was on sale before. This I got in St. Augustine at the oldest schoolhouse, which was so cute. Um, but yeah, this I got there and then these I got at Target. Just an easy way to keep my regular normal supplies organized. Now, I use these when I'm planning everything. I use my Expo markers, obviously, for my whiteboards. Um, and then my Sharpie markers, as well as my Crayola markers. Those were used for my drawing classes. Even though lately for my drawing classes, I've been drawing more on a small whiteboard to help save paper. Now under those markers, I also have a domino game. Now I did share a YouTube short on here a little while back showing what game I love to play with my students. I'll try to actually, I don't even know if I can link that here, um, but it is such a fun game to play if you tutor math students. So I use the dominoes sometimes for math games. Let's talk about blue light glasses. So I wear these in all of my classes and 95% of the time when I'm like in my office space, when I have like the big light on, or when I'm teaching classes or looking on my computer, I think they work. So I've heard like mixed things about blue light glasses that they don't really work and that they aren't very effective. But before I had them and I was wearing just my plain glasses, I would get headaches constantly. And now I rarely get headaches when I'm working. Granted, I eat a lot healthier now and I wear contacts more now and I'm wearing these now. So there's a few things that could be the reason why, but I think they help tremendously and they were only a few bucks for like a bunch of them on Amazon. So I live by these, I love them, super affordable. And I think they make the biggest difference when like you're working on the computer like so much. I teach so many classes and I do so many things on my computer. So it's just really helpful to kind of dim the lights a little bit with these blue light glasses. I have two of them here. I have two other ones somewhere, um, but I honestly, I wear these ones all the time. Now, before I start going through my cart, I'm gonna show you the whiteboards I like to use because I actually keep my whiteboards right next to my cart and I have a few different small whiteboards. So the first one, I love to use whiteboards that have lines. Now I actually got these, I think I thrifted them or at Target, I can't remember. You can find them on Amazon, you can find them at Target. You can even find some of the Dollar Tree, but I love whiteboards with lines and then I also love some without. Um, I prefer this whiteboard actually because it's magnetic um, and I like to sometimes put stuff on my whiteboard. So this one works really, really well. I also have a plain bigger one, which is very dirty right now. This is usually the whiteboard I use for my drawing classes. And I'm gonna give you a little hack, especially if you are also a classroom teacher. If you are a classroom teacher, you can go to Lowe's and have them cut like their big whiteboards for you in small little squares. Now, I did this a few years ago and I tried it at Home Depot first and they wouldn't let me. And then I went to Lowe's and they did and they cut, I wanna say about 30 whiteboards for just a couple dollars. The only downside is they are not magnetic and then they don't have a back, but these work so well if you are a classroom teacher and your school doesn't provide whiteboards. My school didn't and I had to provide my own. And it was like a nice, cheap, affordable way to get a class set of whiteboards. So just a little hack there for you. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the cart. As you can see again, every single section of the cart is labeled. And as I mentioned earlier, I just bought cute labels on TPT. I edited them myself and then I just printed them out. So super easy if you want to label your own cart. I just think it really helps you stay organized and not like just start throwing things in drawers because it's very, very easy to do that. Now the first drawer I have is basically just my schedule. So for out school, I'm a very paper and pen person, so I like to print out my schedule every single week so I just have all my scheduling stuff in there and then I just have a few random stuff nothing special like chapstick airpods an extra mouse which is so helpful so I have a Mac and sometimes my mouse dies it is so so helpful to have a mouse as a backup 
<laughs> because you don't even know how many times I have had a mouse die. My next drawer is everything regarding TPT. So I have all my brainstorming sheets there. And then I also print out a lot of my TPT resources to take photos of my products. So all of that stuff goes in that area and it just keeps like all of my TPT stuff in one spot. My next drawer here is for YouTube and there's not too much in here. I usually have the wires I have for my microphone as well as just notebook paper here. I just write down and plan out all of my YouTube videos. The next drawer is for my tutoring classes. So if you've been watching my videos for a while, you probably know that I love to tutor online and that is where the majority of my income is currently from. So I like to have a specific area for all of my tutoring students. Every single one of my students has one folder and then I quickly just write down our lesson ideas or plan for the week and everything is organized. I like to keep all of my students' data there in case a parent asks any questions or they need updates on how their student is doing and I can even just look back and see what we've done together. So I like to keep all of that nice and organized again on paper because I'm a paper pencil teacher and I like to have it all nicely in a file folder. The next drawer is for another one of my ongoing classes, which is my animal class. And I just have all of my previous animal classes I have taught in the past. Right now I'm currently just repeating all of those animals, but you can see basically all of my lessons are in that area. The next one is very similar, but it's for my phonics classes. So like my ABC classes, my CVC classes, things like that. Um, what I like to do when I organize my classes is I like to keep the papers in a sheet protector and that sheet protector just keeps everything nice and safe so then I'm able to reuse it when I teach that class again and then when I teach like classes over and over instead of constantly printing out new paper I just put it in there and I'm able to write on it with an expo marker so sheet protectors are one of the best things for you to use as an online teacher to help save paper I love sheet protectors and whiteboards like highly 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 recommend those if you are running through paper the next drawer is my one-time classes, which I'm going to be honest with you right now, I am barely teaching any one-time classes, but I used to have, when I taught a lot of one-time classes, a folder for each one-time class. Right now, I just have all of my one-time classes in a folder, but that is where all of my one-time out school classes are. Those are the lessons for it. Now the next drawer says flex classes, but I honestly don't use it for flex classes. I created a flex class or two a while back and I haven't been consistent with them. I do have a goal eventually to actually put more energy into flex classes, but for now this one just has my camps. The next drawer is for courses. Right now I'm actually not in a course, I am in a membership, but I keep all the past course information in there as well as my current membership, all the things I print out, all the notes I take, everything. I just keep it in that area in case I want to revisit later. In case I get any questions about it, I am currently in a TPT membership and I just signed up last month and so far I'm loving it. I am super excited to see if it really helps me with my TPT business. And then finally, the last drawer is just paper. So I have cardstock paper, notebook paper, sticky notes, printing paper, all that fun stuff. It's actually very full right now, but I just have a bunch of paper in there that I use for printing or taking notes, etc. So extra, extra paper is at the bottom. I think that's it with my cart. I am telling you again, my cart is probably my favorite part of my office space just because it helps me stay so organized. And I mean, What's a teacher without a teacher card, right? All right, now we're gonna talk about what's on my desk. So I already talked about my amazing desk. Um, on my desk, I have my computer, which, so personally, I love the desktop computer because it's so big and everything's just so large. When I'm teaching classes, I can easily see everything and have like different things on the screen, but I kind of wish I also had a laptop. So I have an old laptop, but it's so old. Um, in the future, I'm hoping to buy a laptop so I can also work like not always in my office, but I guess it does help as well. It helps you have very, very clear work boundaries. And then everything else on my desk is kind of just random. I have a little thing for my water. I also have another area for like pens and scissors and stuff like that. I have a little container for paper clips. Sometimes I have a plant there if it hasn't died yet. I also have this hard drive. Honestly, I don't use it very much. It could be, I mean, I kind of store YouTube videos on here, but I'm be honest with you, I don't really care if I lose my YouTube videos. I think this is really important if you have like 
flex classes or you're planning on making a course in the future this is definitely when you want a hard drive if you want like a backup for your backup because you can have backups like on google drive and this is definitely a good backup for like important big files it's also good like i do like i mentioned i have my youtube videos on here so they aren't taking space on my computer um that kind of helps as well but this was expensive and i barely use it now a few last things um my stand which i usually use that for when i am recording youtube videos or as a backup device for my classes so my backup device is an ipad and i put my ipad on this device so that i'm able to have it nice and sturdy and teach my classes since i do not have a good laptop i also teach my classes on my ipad when i'm traveling so this is something really easy to use as a backup I honestly recommend having it because your backup device can even be your phone. It's kind of small, but having like a stand for your phone is so, so, so helpful. I use this thing all the time. Like it's so good and it's not even expensive. So highly, highly recommend one of these for a backup device. And I highly recommend a backup device. Again, having it be your phone, an iPad, an extra laptop, something to back up in case your computer or your main device is giving you issues. Now, something new I recently started using is this microphone. This is actually the first YouTube video I'm recording with it. So I have no idea if I used it well, but I'm testing out this microphone to just improve my sound quality. I'm mostly only using it for YouTube and Reels and TikToks and YouTube Shorts and all that social media kind of stuff to see if it just helps again with my sound quality because currently I am not looking to invest in a new camera yet. I think that's just about everything. I am going to talk about a few things that I have plans or goals for in the future. So in the future, this messy area over here, initially I was going to make it a coffee station and I don't even drink coffee anymore. So what I'm thinking of doing is actually making a beautiful wall calendar for like the year. There's some other productivity girl I follow on Instagram that has this beautiful wall and she has a YouTube video about it. So I'll actually link that down below as well. But I'm obsessed with how it looks and I'm thinking of doing that as well and it might actually help me reach my goals better because some, that is something that I think I struggle with if I'm going to be honest is seeing things in like a big point of view or a big perspective. I do pretty well like making goals like per month or per quarter but kind of planning out the year a little bit better. I think that would be a super helpful idea to have stuff on the wall to help me better visualize my goals. So. That is something that's coming in the works. Currently, this closet is full of a mess. I still have classroom stuff in there, as well as clothes I'm trying to get rid of, so that has nothing to do with my workspace either. Oh, I didn't get to talk about my ring light. I do wanna talk about my ring light quickly. I think this ring light is really, really good. Now, it was perfect when I taught VIP Kid because it lights up the classroom beautifully without like any other lights basically and i don't know if my eyes are just used to it my eyes can manage looking at it pretty well um but i could just be used to it because it's so bright now for out school i don't think it's necessary but it is helpful and again it's going to depend on kind of what your office space looks like or where it's located like for me i have a nice pretty size window close by that i get a lot of natural light but if i were to go back to teaching early morning classes that ring light is super helpful it also helps on days where it's like rainy or cloudy and there's like no good natural light so i do love that ring light i think it works really really well I'm gonna do a quick experiment and show you what it looks like when my like everything is dark with my blinds are closed and then with it back on so let me do that real quick okay so how this looks right now is just the small one light bulb in my workroom so this is just one light bulb in my workroom and now I'm gonna turn on my ring light and you're gonna see the difference okay and this is with my ring light and no natural light outside so usually when i'm recording videos i have the window open for some natural light as well but you can see that it lights up really good and this looks really really good on zoom if you don't know already there's like a few features you can switch around a little bit on zoom so you look even brighter but i look so bright on zoom even if it's like a cloudy day so it's super super helpful to have a good quality light i don't think you have to invest in it right away but i do think it's worth it and i think that is it in my messy area i also have a printer and paper but 
Other than that, that is my workspace. That is currently what I'm working with. I shared with you what I have now and kind of my goals for the future. Don't forget, if you have any ideas of things that I can hang up behind me, please share them in the comments down below. And that is all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had fun watching this video because I actually kind of had fun sharing it. It feels a little bit more natural to just talk and share things that I already have. But if you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and you don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future videos and future content. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in a future video.